middle. What's up, guys? Hey, hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Really well, thank you, really well. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us today. Um, it's Friday over in the US, isn't it? Yeah, Saturday there. Yeah, yeah, we already started the weekend. We're ahead of you here. Love it, love it. I miss Australia. How many times have you been here? I came in 2013 for, we backpacked, me and my wife, we backpacked Australia for a month. Oh, wow. Wow. What was yeah. your favorite place here? Honestly, I have to say Melbourne. Um, I, I just love, wh wh where are you guys at right now? Sydney. Uh, that's oh. Like, uh, <laughs> competitor, Melbourne and Sydney. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Wrong answer. I feel like everyone says Sydney, so you have to go with like a city that like isn't on the map, really. Yeah, yeah, no, that's exactly right. Now, Melbourne is a very lovely place, but they say they have four seasons in one day there, so it can be very, very yeah. cold and very, very hot. It's beautiful, though. I mean, I had fun in Cairns and Perth, and Sydney was great, too, and we had a good yeah. time. Oh, fantastic. And what time is it over in America at the moment? 9 p.m. Nine and nine. Nine, yeah. Wow, wow. We're just midday here, so just about in our lunch break, which is great. I'm actually getting a bit hungry. So straight off here and um, into <laughs> the food, which will be good. Um, thank you so much for meeting with our boys. These um, boys are on our ride representative team. So we were supposed to be playing to get to the States, um, but unfortunately that all got cancelled. Um, but this has been our Zoom session. We've been training like this for a few weeks now, just getting the boys together and and talking about you know baseball, you know they absolutely love it. So yeah, I I love talking. I love talking baseball. I'm excited to you know I saw some of the questions and uh, I remember being in those shoes. So yeah, it's not a big deal for me. Perfect. Thank you so much. Now Tony, you've had a hugely successful career today. You know playing in professional teams such as the Cubs, the Astros, um, Oakland Athletics. Um, do you ever pinch yourself and think, hey, this is a dream, you know, like I'm going to wake up one day and, and this has all been a dream? It's, I mean, these, are, these guys dream to be where you are essentially now. Yeah, to be honest with you, um, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a big Christian and, you know, I obviously, you know, thank God for everything he's blessed me with and uh, wouldn't be here without him. But uh, some days I do. I mean, it still gives me chills. Uh, you know, this was my childhood dream to do this. And I know that the statistics, you know, don't really say that it's, you know, viable for everyone to be a major league player. But uh, for sure, I, I, I take nothing for granted. And uh, to put on a big league uniform every day is definitely something uh, I don't take lightly. Yeah, no, it absolutely is amazing. And how old were you when you first started to play baseball? First started to play baseball, I was four years old. I was wow. four. Yeah, so I was I was I was a young young tyke. That's amazing. And at what point in your baseball journey did you think, hey, you know, I'm pretty good at this. I could make this become a career of mine. Yeah, I mean, I'd probably have to say in high school. Um, <laughs> I I knew I was okay in middle school, but in high school, probably right around my sophomore year, sophomore and junior year, I kind of felt like you know, I started getting some looks from colleges and uh, that's when I kind of felt that I had, you know, the talent to play at the next level. I didn't know if I was going to be, you know, D1 or D2. I didn't, honestly, I didn't care. I just remember, you know, talking to my brother and said, hey, do you think I have a shot to get a college scholarship? And, <laughs> um, you know, next thing you know, I'm, you know, uh, signing, playing baseball in college the next thing I know. But it was probably, I was probably 16, 17 years old. Right, and you mentioned your brother just then. Did your brother play baseball as well? Yeah, he played up until double A in the pro ranks. Um, he uh -huh. never made it to the big leagues, but he definitely was my inspiration. Um, he taught me he taught me the ins and outs of baseball and the game within the game. And uh, you know, I'm the I'm the baby of the family, so he's the middle child. So I always looked up to him. All the time to, you know, be just like him. So yeah, it was it was fun. Amazing. And it, obviously he would be proud at, with how far that you've come. Has, <laughs> has he ever sort of said, it's all because of me that you're there? 
Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's awesome. I think, you know, obviously it takes a lot of hard work and, you know, obviously you just want to have fun with it and uh, it's a game, you know, you want to go out and have fun with your buddies and, but at the same time you want to work hard. And um, at the end of the day, you know, you're trying to reach a goal that, um, you know, you've dreamed about ever since you were five, six years old. So uh, it takes a lot of hard work and dedication, but uh, you know, you just have to believe in yourself at the end of the day. No, that's exactly right. And when you were, say, 12 years old, did you play Little League as well? Like, were you in a, a Little League team? Yeah, so my brother, my dad made me play up every league I was in. So yeah. that probably made me better. But um, instead of using an aluminum bat, my brother made me use a wood bat up until I was probably eight or nine. So mm -hmm. I got used to using a wood bat. And then once I started using aluminum, it was like, it was very easy. <laughs> So hit and dingers for sure, yeah? Yeah, so he took me in the backyard and, you know, it was like a little wood stick, probably as tall as I was, and I was, you know, swinging this wood thing. I didn't know what I was doing. Uh, but for the longest time, I batted right-handed, and uh, I was not good. And mm -hmm. finally, I switched over to left-handed side, and I started crushing the ball. So my brother thought I was left or right-handed, and then I was like, there has to be a way. So I found out that I was – I threw my right hand, bat left hand. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think there's a few of those um, actually in our team. If you're a bat left um, throw right, put your hand up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's awesome. That's awesome. Perfect. Now, thinking back to that Little League stage in your career, how much training did you guys do back then with your Little League team? How old are we talking? Well, these guys are like 12, 12, 13. Sorry. 12, 13? Age, yeah. Okay, so that's when I was probably getting into travel ball, going to like different states, um, you know, to play competitively. Yeah. Um, but after I was 12 years old, man, it was literally like um, I played three sports. So I didn't get burned out. You know, I kind of had different friend groups and different um, people in different circles. So I wasn't – I wasn't focused on baseball because obviously I, I didn't know how good I was at the time. Yeah. Uh, but I just, I didn't want to get burned out. So my dad made me play two other sports. Um, so I really didn't have much time to spend on just baseball. It was like after baseball was done, I was rolling right in the football practice and football was done. I was rolling right in the basketball practice and then base basketball was rolling the baseball. So like it was this continuous cycle of just sports and sports, but um, I had a good time because I didn't, just focus all my energy on one thing like you know I had different aspects of my life that I could like focus on. Wow no that is amazing. Thinking about to your coaches now sitting beside me um, is Andrew. Andrew is the coach of these guys um, and I'm their executive officer um, and we try and give you know advice to these guys and we hope that you know at least one of these things will stick in um, to their mind but what's the best bit of advice that a coach has ever given you and, and why was it so important? Um, I think the best advice I got was once I got to college and, um, you know, Coach Corbin's probably been my favorite coach I've had in college. Um, he said, I need to have a short-term memory and didn't really understand it at the time, but once you get in the pro ranks and you start pay playing competitively, I mean, this – you know, baseball is one of those sports to where if you get a hit three out of ten times, you're successful. But, you know, people don't talk about failing seven other times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with that failure, you need to have that quick memory of, you know, you struck out, okay, get the next one. Because having that short-term memory, you don't want that strikeout to go into your defense and all of a sudden that strikeout leads to an error. And then all of a sudden, like, you're letting your team down on both ends. And, you know, to be able to let yourself – be unselfish in that moment is important because you realize that it's bigger than yourself the game is bigger than yourself and you know once people get caught up in like they think that they're bigger than the game is you know it's, it's a huge mistake absolutely and um do you have any rituals that you do uh, <laughs> that you must do before a game I, like i mean i hear a lot sometimes you know they've got to wear odd socks or they've got to do this or they can't wash their baseball pants um after a win what is your ritual that you, you would do before a game yeah so um 
it's kind of funny. I like to have I like to drink a milkshake before games. Mm-hmm. It might be like that's probably not the right thing that I should say, but <laughs> I think the older you get, um, you kind of understand your body more. I like to drink a milkshake, and then I like to take a thirty to forty five minute nap, depending upon um, how long I have before the game. But um, you know, people get people would always just see me sleeping in the clubhouse or wherever it may be. But um, when I'm sleeping, I'm actually visualizing. And what I'm doing is I'm visualizing me doing well in the game. So once I do well in the game, I've already kind of seen myself do it in my head, if that makes any sense. So when I do take the nap, I visualize, you know, the pitcher's arm slot. I mean, this is kind of advanced, but I kind of, you know, visualize the pitcher's arm slot. What's his secondary pitches? I kind of go through, all right, what's he like to do? What's his out pitch? What pitch does he not like to throw? And then after that, I like to take a nap and just kind of take my mind off everything. And um, those are one of the rituals I like to do. I mean, every guy is different. Um, you know, every guy puts their same socks on the, on the same way. So, um, you know, everyone's human at the end of the day, but those are a couple of mine. I can just imagine now all of these boys, um, they'll be playing a major game and they'll all be asleep on the sideline <laughs> waiting for the game. And I can just imagine their competition thinking, oh, my God, what are they doing? Yeah, and it's, you know, it's not even that you have to even fall asleep because sometimes before a game, your mind is so race, racing still. Like, you know, it takes a, it took me probably a year or two to perfect myself of falling asleep and turning my brain off. But uh, to be able to just close my eyes for five minutes and just to, you know, see what the pitcher, what his arm slot is, different things like that, you know, made me, it made me better, I felt like. Wow. Now, tell us about the first Major League Baseball game you ever played. And (laughs) how did it feel and how did you cope with your nerves? Because your nerves would have been, like, way up here. Dude, honestly, my legs, my legs and my feet felt like air. Like, it felt like I couldn't walk right. Like, I felt like I was, like, Gumby or, like, a (laughs) a new infant. Um, But... Yeah, playing, I got my first major league game in Chicago. Um, It was actually a pinch run. And so I scored one of the game winning runs or something like that. But, um, you know, I just remember they called down the dugout and they said, Kemp, you're in. And, man, it just, I mean, it makes me smile to this day now. It's just, you know, I remember after that game, I was like, man, I can retire. You know, I did what I needed. I made the big leagues. It's over. Um, But it was, I just, you know, I just try to tell myself, hey, it's just another game and it's just another day at the playground and just try to keep myself as calm as I could. And, uh, you know, I didn't want to be that guy that was like, you know, overstepping his boundary. I just wanted to be like, you know, stay in the background, not step on anybody's toes too much and, you know, just put my head down and have a good time. And uh, we ended up winning a couple of games and, you know, the rookies had to carry all the beer for all the guys. So I was stuck with <laughs> carrying like, 50 beers by myself but you know (laughs) those are the things that you uh you cherish wow I mean they train you for that right the beer carrying part of it for a game yeah the whole part of being a rookie right that's it (laughs) you talk about baseball um you know being a game of you know winning and losing and, and the winning part of it must feel really really great but how do you stay motivated after a loss like a big loss like how do you keep on going back the next day and the next day yeah, that's the, um, you know, and for these kids, I just want to give the message of just having fun because once you get to a certain level, um, you know, it does become a job. I mean, you see a lot of the guys do have fun. You guys probably see, you know, the home runs, the celebrations, but, you know, they don't really film the low lights of your life or the times people you get sent down after you're in the big leagues or the times that, um, you know, people tell you you're not good enough. You know, there's, you know, everybody's going to have their own opinions. But, you know, if I was going to give advice to a 12 year old me or a 13 year old me, I would say just have fun, hang in there and don't let don't sweat the small stuff. Because at the end of the day, if you're worried about all these little things, then you're not going to be able to enjoy playing baseball. And, you know, I'm obviously I'm very fortunate to be 28 years old and still playing a kid's game. And um that's unbelievable you know I, they're gonna have to kick me off the field before uh, I hang up my jersey but um yeah it's just to stay motivated it's just you remember why you started you know you started when you're four or five years old and why did you start because you love the game and you're gonna love that day in and day out challenge because you know you might be on the, you might be 
one of the best players on the team now, but I promise you next year there's going to be – there's always someone who's better than you. And, um, you know, I think that's what always kept me driving is I wanted to be the best and I wanted to be, you know, one of those guys people talked about. And, um, you know, for my size, I was always undersized, so I had a chip on my shoulder just because um, I didn't get the recogniz the recognition other people got. And that was okay, but I think that, you know, kept me uh, just having fun toward the game. Amazing. And, I mean, when you have a team, you have, you know, more than the nine that are on the field. So what are you thinking if you get benched for a game and you're sitting on the bench watching your teammates play? What's sort of that thought process that's going through your mind? Yeah, I mean, once you get benched, I mean, there's a lot of factors that go into it. I mean, was it my attitude? Was it how I was playing the game? Did I run out of the box? Did I play as hard as I could? Um, was there something I could do better? A lot of things go through your mind after a benching or something like that happens. Uh, the level I'm at now, it's more of like you would talk to the manager and say, hey, you know, what was going on in this situation? What do you need from me? How can I, how can I better myself? Um, but it's different. Once you get benched when you're, when you're um, you know, 13, 14 years old, that's a different life. That's a different, that's a different style than right now just because uh, you need to know what you did. And once you talk to your coach and ask what you did, it's, you know, how do you get, how do you better yourself from that moment on? And, um, you know, I would get benched a couple of times just for not hustling or for, you know, being, my wife's here. Hey, hey John Jen. Where is it? John Ray? Where are my I cousins? I don't know. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. But, um, yeah, it just all depends on how you handle the situation. You don't want to, you don't want to be too hard on yourself because, uh, you know, you just want to continue to have fun with the game and, uh, you know, be able to be that, that positive person, you know, on the team. And you don't want to be that guy who's always negative Nancy. You always want to be someone who, uh, someone can go to your teammate and, you know, pick you up. Exactly. I mean, you would have had some huge memorable moments in your career looking at all the games that you've played, but what stands out as the most memorable experience to date? Yeah, I mean, I've been blessed with a lot of good opportunities. Um, I probably would have to say in 2018, hitting a home run in the ALCS against the Boston Red Sox, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, you know, Jose Altuve was DHing, and I got to I got to start in left field, and uh, it was definitely one of those experiences where I'll never forget. So I'm going to say that was, besides my first Major League home run, that was probably my most memorable moment. So you just stole the question. My very, very next question was. <laughs> I know, I know. I read, I read the questions. Right. I cheated. <laughs> That's exactly right. Exactly right. So how many home runs have you hit so far in your career? Sorry, say it one more time. How many home runs have you hit in your career? So I think only like 15. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. I give, remember give me remember every single one. Yeah, honestly, I do know every single one. Yeah. yeah, those are. I mean, I wish I had. I mean, I'm not a power guy, but so when I do hit a home run, I make sure I watch it. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. I mean, I record all of my songs over, and I see them all the time, rewatching them over and over again. So that's I'm sure good. You that's can good. That's everyone. That's positive feedback for your for your mental. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Now your jersey number. Is there any significance to your jersey number whatsoever? So right now I'm number five. Um, I've always wanted to have a single digit in the big leagues and I've always been 18 or 16, but mm -hmm. uh, my favorite number has always been seven, but I played for the Astros and seven was retired by Biggio. Mm -hmm. And um, then I went to the Cubs and then I was number four. Uh, so yeah, no significance, but if I can get back to that number seven, that's the, uh, that's the goal. That's always been my favorite number. We're going to have to watch you now, your whole career now, waiting for you to get that number seven. I know. I know. I'm still waiting on it. <laughs> Is there any guys here in our team that's number seven? Who's number seven? Anyone? Anyone? I, see, I don't think oh, that's like? seven. I think Boaz is seven. Boaz, maybe. Boaz on the bottom. Yeah, he might be. Oh, nice. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I honestly, you know, for these, yes, for these kids, I just want these kids to have fun. Because one day you're going to get to an age where you're not going to be playing baseball and you're going to, it's going to happen like that. Because slowly and slowly, like, you know, people will stop playing baseball or you'll move schools or 
Um, I just want everybody to cherish the moment and just have fun because, you know, it, it ends fast. And it's crazy because I remember when I was sitting in their shoes and someone was telling me this and I was like, that's, it's not going to end fast. And then all of a sudden you're 28 years old and you're like, okay, I, that person was right. <laughs> I can imagine. Now, I um, have the pleasure of cleaning out my son's kit bag and, and finding all sorts of stuff that's in his kit bag. Um, but, you know, if we were to look in your kit bag, your baseball bag at the moment, what might surprise us that's in that bag? Honestly, it might not surprise my teammates because I, they know I love candy. So there's definitely going to be a bag of Skittles in my bag for sure. Yeah, yeah. Anything else that's <laughs> exciting? It's going to be the sugar. I mean, you need high energy. You need the sugar. Is there I mean, anything I, else? I mean, I already have energy enough, but just adding like six or seven Skittles before I run to the field is like, it's like that extra boost that I need, you know? Wow. I could even But no, no, nothing, in, nothing in my bag that would like surprise everyone. It's like, I mean, I got cleats. I got, you know, a jock strap, glove, bat, ball. It is what it is. Just the standard stuff, right? Just the standard stuff, besides the Skittles. I don't know if anybody has Skittles in there. <laughs> Perfect. Now, after a big game, and I, I know, you know, like you can play a game after game, and, and sometimes games go, you know, early in the morning, and then you're waking up and you're playing again. What do you do to recover between games? You know, for me, it's just rest. The biggest thing is just getting, you know, I'm more of a homebody. I mean, you more think of athletes going out, having a good time, partying and stuff. But when you have 162 games, it's a tough schedule. And you're traveling and you're getting back late to hotels. And, you you know, you have a getaway day. So you're playing a Sunday early day game. And then you're getting to your city at night. And then you play the next morning. It's like, it's tough. So for me, I just make sure my, you know, legs are right. You know, I have a recovery system now. But um, other than physically, mentally, I want to just – flush that last game because no matter if you had the best game of your life or the worst game of your life everybody starts over tomorrow it doesn't doesn't even matter so for my for myself you know I don't want to get too down on myself because you know what you're gonna have four more at bats the next day and if you're carrying over that negative energy from the game before into the next game you've already failed mm -hmm. absolutely and I, I can see them all agreeing with you there um, which is great now, yeah. my final question, and I'm going to hand you over to the boys, and, and my questions are easy, trust me, compared to the boys' questions. They've been playing It's all good. No, it's all good. Um, but what bit of advice would you give these guys? These guys will be sort of, you know, hopefully one day someone will say to them, you know, what's the best bit of advice that you received um, in baseball? Hopefully they'll remember back to this time um, having a chat to you. So what part of it, you know, what bit of advice would you pass on to them? <laughs> For, for me, obviously, I've already said I have fun, but I want you guys to take this to heart. So the best, the best um, you know, kind of compliment you can get as a Major League Baseball player is that you're a good teammate. And that rings volumes in so many ways because if you're a good teammate, you're doing multiple things. You're not only taking care of yourself, but you're looking out for your other guys and that kind of shows that you care about your teammates. It's not that you're selfish, you know, you look out for other people and that's important. You know, people notice that stuff and, you know, baseball can get so wrapped into such a selfish game um, that it shows. And I've always been a guy that I just want to be a good teammate. I want to be good to you. I want to check in on you. How are you doing? Uh, because this game is tough. So um, I just want you guys to be the best teammates that you guys can be to each other because one day you guys aren't going to be friends with everybody who's sitting in this Zoom call right now. And, um, yeah, I just say be the best teammate you can be, which is being a selfless person and, you know, picking up the balls when no one asks you and uh, picking up the bats when no one asks you and, you know, doing the things that you don't want to do, but, you know, you do it behind closed doors and no one asks you to do it, but you just do it because you know it's the right thing to do. Wow, amazing. Now, this is where I hand you over to the boys. Um, yeah. So I'm going to get, um, if I can, the ones that have got your videos off as well, it'd be great to see you if you can turn your videos on. Um, who would like to ask the first question? Mm -hmm. Oh, look, they've all got their hands up. I'm going to go across to Oren first. Oren, if you could unmute yourself, that would be great. Yeah. Um, who's the best player you've versed on your 
like versed in your career and who is the best player you've had on your team? So like the best pitcher I faced? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, oof. There's actually been multiple. Um do you guys do you guys know um Araldus Chapman? Yep. All right, yes. so he walked me, but honestly I really didn't see any of the balls that crossed the strike zone. <laughs> Uh, it was in Yankee Stadium two years ago, and um, yeah, it, the ball kind of looked like a tube, and I was like, wow, you know, it's it's a lot different when it's on TV versus standing in that box, and uh, yeah, it's impressive. Who's the uh, who's the pitcher for the Mets, the main guy? DeGrom. Jacob DeGrom. Yeah, Jacob DeGrom. He's, I faced him in New York last year, and I went 0 for 3, two strikeouts, and um yeah, it's just one of those fastballs that just is explosive. Just he throws it out of his hand and, you know, it's on you. And he throws the secondary stuff anywhere he wants. And uh, he buries his curveball when he wants to, too. And, you know, that's why he's won multiple Cy Youngs, because he can throw every pitch in any count, in any location, and, um, you know, be consistent with it. So those two pitchers are probably one of the – sorry, the, the tougher guys I face. But uh, – I mean, man, I've played with some good dudes, honestly. Um, Jose Altuve, obviously, is very special player I played with. But Javi Baez, shortstop for the Cubs, he uh, he's a special player. So probably those two guys. Perfect. Um, Kim, how about you? I was just scratching my head. Thank you, Cody's hand up. Um, Beckett, we'll hand over to you. Um, what was your greatest obstacle that you had, uh, like, overcome to get to the majors? Yeah, so like I said, I mean, I mentioned it earlier. Um, so I'm only 5'6". Is anybody 5'6 there yet? 5 foot 6 inches, anyone? Yeah, so I have been – this is the height I am right now. And um, <laughs> to just get over that, oh, man, it was a – it was tough because – you not only have to be a good player, but you have to be better than everybody else just to be seen. And, um, you know, I used to be mad at my dad. I'm like, man, you didn't make me taller. Like, what's up with that? You know? Um, but yeah, just coming out of college and I got drafted in the fifth round of the draft. And, um, you know, me personally, every guy thinks they should get taken higher. And, you know, like I said, I think that, you know, God, you know, everything happens for a reason. And, and I think I was put in that certain position just so I wouldn't, you know, get lackadaisical or complacent. And, um, you know, it still kind of eats at me. But uh, I, try to, I try to stay humble in my own ways and just, you know, I know that I'm going to be short. And I think that that kind of drives me every day to just always be better. Uh, but, yeah, that was the hardest obstacle is, you know, people would always say, yeah, he can play baseball, but he's short. I'm like, what does that mean? I'm short. I get I'm short, but I, I'm good at baseball. Like. Uh, so yeah, uh, probably being short. Perfect. And I, I, I laugh at that because I'm actually six foot. I like to say six foot, but probably closer to six foot one, and I'm a girl. So I yeah. So the other yeah, way. you're so you're looking down at me for sure. <laughs> now we've got Ashton up the top um, for a question. And Kai, you're after that. I got two questions. Um, first one. First one. What's the mental and physical mindset you need to perform in the majors? Okay, you want me to answer the first one? I'll answer the first one right now. That's just, that's just one question. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I'm going to go physical first. I think physical, it's all about your body. Um, you know, I have a dietitian. I make sure I eat right. Vegetables, I eat a lot of vegetables. I hated vegetables when I was a kid. I eat a lot of them now. <laughs> Broccoli is like my favorite one now. Put a little salt on it. It's awesome. Uh, but physically, yeah, you need to make sure your body's in tip-top shape. Um, when I'm in season, I work out twice a week. When I'm out of season, it's four times a week. Um, so just making sure that I'm in baseball shape. Um, physically, you know, once you get older, once you guys start growing into your bodies, you'll understand. You just, you know, I would say listen to your body. Everybody's Everybody's body is different. You know, some guys can – take grueling, you know, game after game and be fine. And some guys don't need to recover. But, you know, I would say some advice would be to make sure you listen to your body because it'll tell you what you need. Uh, you know, mentally, mentally, man, it just took me a long time to get to where a point I am now. 
Um, at the end of the day, it is a game, and you do have a game the next day. Uh, but for y'all's age, mentally, y'all just need to have a short-term memory. Don't worry about that last game, like I said. Um, you know, once you get older, you'll understand that there's more aspects within the game that you need to hone in in your mind. And once you get there, you'll you'll under we'll have to have another Zoom call probably five years from now, and then then you guys will understand what I'm talking about. But uh, you know, mentally, uh, like I said, you know, have a short term memory. You know, you, your last at bat does not matter. It only matters about you know what is the next thing you can do in a game. Just because you struck out or you know you flew out with bases loaded, no outs. Um, you know, it's all about your next at bat. You're only as good as your last at bat. Absolutely. And and, I, down the bottom. Oh, okay, don't. Oh, what's your furthest home run you pit? <laughs> Honestly, um, last year was my furthest home run I hit. Uh, when I was in Houston, I hit I hit up in the second deck. So that was like, yeah, I got big boy strength. <laughs> I don't know how far it went. I think it probably went like close to 400, but uh, it was definitely up there. Yeah, and what was your – what has been your worst injury? Worst injury? Knock on wood. Knock on wood. I uh, haven't really had any bad injuries. But uh, when I was in high school, I sprained my MCL, which is just like your ACL. Um, and I had to uh, – I had to sit out for probably about a month to two months. But other than that, no, no major injuries. Um, actually, you know what? My freshman year of college – uh, you know, make sure you go into home plate feet first. I went in head first, and he blocked the plate. And when I went, when I went to go slide in, this finger went this way, and I dislocated oh. my index finger my freshman year in college. And that was probably that was probably one of the worst ones I had. I don't. I would not suggest doing that. I've seen some guys do do that in B League over here. It's it's not pretty. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. <laughs> Uh, we're going to hand you over to, I think, your cousin, Akira. Hi, Tony. Uh, i got two questions. Yeah. First one is, do you have a motto you live by? Do I have what? A motto you live by. A motto? A motto, yeah. Man, honestly, there's so many mottos I live by. I, I could name three right now. I'll give you three. Um, you know, one for me is if you're not working today, there's always someone who's working harder than you. Um, you know, and that kind of rings true just because my brother was, you know, I'd always be on the couch or, you know, hanging out and he's like, man, there's probably someone getting better than you right now. And that used to always, that used to always eat at me because not only is it true, but it's really true, you know? So, um, that one always got at me. Um, you know, my second one is be the best you can be today. Um, because there is no tomorrow. And, you know, that, for me, uh, that's important because, you know, you need to leave it all out on the field. And you don't need to leave anything in the tank, you know, because you never know uh, when that last game is going to come. It's got, like this – everybody's going to stop playing baseball one day. It's, it's inevitable, no matter if it's father time or people get burnt out. But someone's going to – you're going to – someone's going to tell you you can't play baseball anymore. And, um at the end of the day, if I can't look at myself in the mirror and say that I gave the best I could, then I can't, I can't live with myself with that. So um, be the best you can be um, every day because you never know there's, if there's going to be a tomorrow. And uh, my last one would be trust yourself because if you can't trust yourself, who else is going to trust um, yeah, or believe in you? So trust in you, trust in your abilities. Um, you know, you're, you're, this, you're at this point in your life for a reason because – you know, you've been better than 10 or 11 year olds and now you're in the 12 or 13 year olds and you want to keep getting better and better and better. So you just have to trust your talents and know that you're putting in the hard work and, um, you know, believe in yourself. It, it sounds cliche, but uh, you, you need to have 100% confidence in yourself every day. Perfect. Um, we're going to go back to Ashton because he's had his hand up patiently and I cut him off on that second question. And, and then Justin, gonna, you're after that. Yeah, then we're going to head over to Justin. Um, how do you uh, keep fresh for back-to-back -back games for 120 games? <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, I take a lot of cold tubs. It sounds terrible right now, and it's as terrible as it sounds. It's just, you know, jump in the tub. But, you know, for me, how my body is right now, that's just how my body 
um, it recuperates faster that way. Some guys get massages, but for me, it's the cold tub. So uh, I probably cold tub uh, probably 10 minutes, eight to 10 minutes, and then hop in the hot tub after every game. So, boys, that means uh, ice baths after nationals and state every game, all right? 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's brutal. I've actually tried an ice bath, and I think I lasted 30 seconds. And I was yeah, see, there. and see, that's the point. If you can get to a minute, everything goes numb. So just get to a minute and then just, just, and you know what? I honestly like ice baths because it's good for your mental because you're just sitting in a tub. The only thing that's going to tell you to get out is your, is your brain. <laughs> yeah, no, that's clearly my mom was telling me to get out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we're going to head over to Justin. Justin, your question. I've got two questions. The first one is, have you played in Coolsfield? And if you have, is what they say about it true? Yes, the ball absolutely flies. Um, I played in there the past two years. It's an unbelievable park to play in. I love Colorado. Um, Coors Field is one of my favorites, but everybody has oxygen tanks in the dugout. And uh, I remember going first to home after, after somebody hit a triple. And yeah, it's definitely the altitude and they keep all the balls in like a humidifier. So they don't, they, they try not to travel as far, but I mean, you can't help it. The, the air is so thin up there, the ball just flies. And my second one is, what is the grind of the miners like? <laughs> Ooh, are you ready for this conversation? Are you ready? You're 13 plus. No, no, no. no. Um, Justin's actually one of the coaches with us. Sorry, he's the assistant. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. Um, uh, sorry, I only can see your screen. I can't really see everybody's. Um, but, you know, for the minor leagues, it's a different story. Um, once I got to the minor leagues, my first hotel room, my roommate got bed bugs and we were staying at a motel eight, I think it was. And I was like, okay, this is a complete 180 from what I'm used to in, um, in college. And, you know, it's a more of a, you know, my dad and my brother were concerned because once you go from college to the pro ranks, it's like, it's more of a dog eat dog world. Um, it's not more about the team. It's more about just your individual performance because not everyone is going to make the big leagues. Um, you know, it's such a small percentage now. I mean, at a time you have, what, 750 guys in the big leagues at a time now. Um, so it's such a small percentage to make it. But in the minor leagues, it's just a different story. There's, you know, there's a lot of – I mean, I know you guys are young, but there's a lot of things that go into it. I mean, you have, you know, you – got a lot of guys chase girls or they're drinking or they're going out and there's a lot of things factors that play into it that you just want to steer you know yourself clear from and um it was hard for me I mean obviously it's 100 and you know 30 40 some games but um I think at the end of the day for me it was important to keep a notebook and I kept a notebook because I'm a visual person and I like to kind of see my goals every day visually so uh my goals was you know make the big leagues and be successful and uh not be too hard on myself because at the end of the day this game is very freaking hard um you know other than golf I think it's one of the hardest sports to play um it, it's crazy because you can take a baseball player and you can put him in a football arena or a basketball gym and he'll be athletic but you can't take a basketball or football player and put him in the baseball field it just doesn't work like that so uh you know you got to understand you have to know how special your talents are and you know, the minor leagues was a grind, but, you know, I think the minor leagues and it being so tough until I made it to the big leagues made it that much, you know, sweeter. Um, Frank. What was the journey like to get to the big leagues? Yeah, so, I mean, you have to take a couple different steps. So once I got drafted, I was in low, I was in short season. And short season is a, you know, it's a level where they take college kids or guys just drafted and it's half a season. So I started in Troy, New York, played half a season there, got called up to low A, played in low A for the next half of the season. Um, the next year, 2014, started out in Lancaster, California, which is high A, stayed there for half a year. I, I've actually been blessed. I only stayed each year probably halfway. Um, so, you know, I hit every step, short season, low A, high A, double A, triple A, and in the big leagues, you know, some guys skip steps. Uh, 
but it was definitely difficult. You know, that, I don't know how many games I've played in the minor leagues, but it's definitely a lot. Um, you know, people don't understand that what the grind takes. Um, you know, it takes a special person. And, you know, no matter what people will say about anybody in the big leagues or say, oh, he's terrible or he sucks, it's like, you have a different you have a different perspective of those guys because you know the grind that it took just to even get just to even step in that big league box you know how hard it was to get there so uh you know you have a different respect for those guys um lucas we'll head over to you and then we'll go up to akira uh how long did you spend in college uh, so I spent three years in college from 2011 to 2013, and then I got drafted my junior year. So three years in college, but after my first full season of uh, professional baseball, I went back and finished my degree. So, um, yeah, no, mo no more school for me. <laughs> um, and Akira? What do you give up to play baseball? What did I give up? Yeah. Ooh, man, this is this is gonna get deep. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, it takes a lot. I mean, you know, there's three things. Obviously, once you get older, you learn about time management and different things like that. But you know, honestly, it's you know, you give up your social life. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't change anything for the world. But uh, being able to go out in high school and you know, you got practice or you're worrying about this test or you got a paper. Um, you know, it took a lot to get there. You have to sacrifice family time. You can't really go to family vacations or family reunions or, uh, you know, people want to get together, but you're traveling for baseball. And it's more of the friendships that you miss, if that makes any sense. Um, but, you know, I'm married now, so I have my wife. So that's not really the only person I really need. But, uh, <laughs> Once you're grinding just to make it, um, yeah, you sacrifice a lot. You sacrifice, you know, those parties that you could have went to or that trip you could have went on. But at the end of the day, I think I would rather be in the big leagues than miss those trips. Absolutely. I think you're right there. And Cam, you're not scratching your head this time? Uh, so what sport would you play if you didn't play baseball? Man, honestly, I was too short to play anything else. So, like, I honestly don't know. <laughs> um, but I was always a soccer fan. I love playing FIFA on PlayStation. Um, if I could have done anything else, I would have played soccer. Um, it was always during baseball season, so I couldn't play. But anytime in recess, I was always on the soccer fields. Um, I love to score goals. I feel like I would have been like a – I feel like I would have been like a midfield guy. Like, I love to just run all around, play defense, you know, maybe score a goal every now and then. But uh, I just have respect for those guys because you run up and down the court like it's nothing and – or up and down the field like it's nothing. And those guys are in some tremendous shape. So, I would probably have to play soccer. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, Ashton's got his hand up again. So, Preston Ashton. Um, do, uh, do you think my track's a good? <laughs> what? Do you think is um? Do you think Mike Trout's the goat? Like he's the best. Mike Trout. Yeah. Oh, dude. Honestly, so I have like a I keep like a every team I play, I try to get like you know a cool player. So I have a Mike Trout Stein jersey. Um, but he's just one of those guys who's different. So I'll tell you this story right now. It's a crazy story. So when I was in high school. I was committed to East Carolina University, which is in, um, it's in one of the Carolinas here. It's in North Carolina. And when I was a senior in high school, I got on the web, or I was a junior in high school. I got on the website and I was like, who is this Mike Trout guy? Mike Trout was supposed to go to East Carolina. Me and him were committed to go to the same college. And he ended up going in the draft. And then I ended up decommitting and going to Vanderbilt because Vanderbilt offered me a full ride scholarship. So not only did Mike Trout decommit, I decommitted, and uh, the coach still hasn't returned my phone call, and I don't think he will. But, um, yeah, so, yeah, Mike Trout is actually, um, you know, he's going to go down. He's going to be in the Hall of Fame. Wow. Um, Ryan, I know that you had some questions prepared for today. So, uh, what are some tips on infield? 
The infield. What position? Uh, shortstop. Shortstop. Um, first step. First step is your most important. Ready position. Um, you need to be in sync with the pitcher. Um, once the pitcher goes, you need to have your pre-step um, steps already in. Uh, first step's important. You need to have a strong arm when you get to the hole. You need to be good with your glove side. Uh, shortstop's a tough position once you get older because it's like the captain of the infield. Uh, you need to know all the pick plays. You need to know all the signs. Uh, you know, but for your age, I would say uh, just take care of the baseball. Uh, don't get yourself too caught up with the making the throw to first base so quick. Make sure that you take care of the fundamentals first. And, you know, you still have to catch the ball. You still have to throw the ball. And some people take that for granted, but it's hard to do. So um, I would say focus on those two things. Perfect. Harry, did you have a question? No, he's shaking his head. Um, Justin, oh, and then we'll go back to Frank. Um, so you play both the outfield and the infield. What's it like switching between the two simultaneously? So if you play one game outfield, can you just switch straight like that? Yeah, so it's actually – it actually was harder than I thought. Um, once I got to college – I was a shortstop going into high school. And then once I got to high school, they moved me to center field because of my speed. And then once I got to college, I started back in the infield because one of our infielders got hurt at second. And our coach wanted another lefty, righty bat in the lineup. So I moved to second base. Um, but the hardest thing for me, what I learned to do is take an infield glove everywhere. Because what was hard for me is I was taking my outfield glove to infield, infield glove to outfield, and like, the 11 and a half inch glove and the 12 and three quarter inch glove are two completely different gloves. So when I was going for ground balls in the infield, I was used to my outfield glove. So I would miss the ball by that much. So for me, I would just take my infield glove around me everywhere. And then I got used to having a small glove in my hand. And then once I went to the outfield, I would only use my outfield glove in the games. And that helped me a lot. That helped me a lot better because the outfield glove felt like a Venus fly trap when I put it on compared to the infield glove. Um, but it can be difficult. It's all in your head. It's not, it, you want to make sure that you just don't confuse yourself too much and just trust yourself. Like it, it's going to come to you. So I can't say trust yourself enough. You have to, uh, but I enjoy, I enjoy both, you know, both have their own perks in field. You're more in the action outfield. You can take away extra base hits from guys and RBIs and doubles and triples. So, um, I like both equally. Perfect. And it was Frank next, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, what's your mindset when you step into the batter's box? Oh, it's um it's clear. Nothing else matters at that point. Um my heart beats slow. Uh I usually talk to myself. <laughs> I usually talk to myself and um you know, it's you versus the pitcher. Um you know, sometimes you know you I'm a big I'm a big visual person, so like I said, I like to visualize what's going to happen, and once it happens, I'm I've already been there. Um, so once I step in the box, my mind is clear. Nothing else matters. Um, family doesn't matter. Relationships don't matter. My dad doesn't matter. Whoever, whatever problems I have, once I step in that box, that's my that's my personal time. So that's the time that I get to do what I want. Um, so yeah, my mind is clear and I'm focused. Perfect. That's it. Um, yeah, what's the good? What do you do to cope with pressure? And like what is some advice you could give to us to like cope with pressure? All right, so let me ask you a question. Are you are you muted? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. All right, so to you, what is pressure? Um, like to give you an instance when it's like tie game, bases loaded two outs. Like Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you put pressure on yourself, and sometimes I put pressure. Exactly. So you already said it. You put pressure on yourself, right? So to me, pressure is what you make it. It's pressure is what you perceive pressure. If that instance in a game is big to you, then it's going to be big, and you're going to be nervous. But if you go up to the plate, bottom of the ninth, two outs, runner on third, you're down by one. Um, have fun with it because you know what at the end of the day when everyone leaves that game people are going to forget about it so why why 
spin yourself over backwards if, you know, just for that moment, you get outside yourself. So for me, pressure is just something that is in your head. And if you can just take that moment and slow it down and say, hey, this is fun. Like, this is, this is, this is fun. Like, golly, just think about those days where, like, you know, you're, you're, you look out and your teammates are on second. You know what? Those guys believe in you and they trust you. So if they trust you, you got to believe in yourself. So uh, pressure for me is one of those things that I invite it. I enjoy that stuff because, um, you know, those moments are so few and far between and you don't get a lot of them. So just have fun with it. Thank you. Okay, does anyone have any other questions they haven't asked? Ah, you, I know, I know, we never get this. Um, I told you that they would ask. That's a good them. thing. That's a good thing then. <laughs> exactly. Um, we can't thank you enough for coming on today. I know that our boy and, and all the boys here have been hugely excited the last week um, to meet with you and just to learn a little bit about what it is that you do and how you got there um, because I'm sure all of these boys have the same dream um, to yeah. see where you are. So, um, you know, I just want to, I, you know, I know, I know they're younger. I just want them to have fun. Um, I can't stress that enough because, you know, like I said, it's going to end one day for everybody. And if you get so wrapped up into just, you know, putting pressure on yourself and, you know, doing all these things, you're not going to enjoy it. So just enjoy it because, you know, like I said, one day it's going to end. So put your best foot forward. And if you can look at yourself in the mirror at the end of the day and say, I gave my best, then it's all you can do. Exactly. Now, can we get like a, a photo of you guys all smiling? Yeah, um, for sure. Wow. For sure. Thanks, we'll and I've got to like try and get it in. you got to be in there as well because yeah, we're on the screen. <laughs> Oh, wait, wait, wait. Ryan's down here and Ryan was up there. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> he's frozen. He's frozen. Oh, he's frozen. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Thank you so much. All right, guys. And so uh, there's there's 13 new fans for you, Tony. Every time that you're going up to bat and we're all going out to uh, run onto the field, there'll be 13 Australian it. dudes back here. Uh, watching you and uh, and Barry and cheering for you, making making sure you've got support from us. Yeah, if you guys have any other questions, don't be don't be afraid to shoot in my way. And make sure you follow our little league journey. I know that Akira, um, we're going to make you send the information back now um, to Tony, um, so you can watch our little journey here. Yeah. Um, because you know, hopefully next year we will be in California playing in the intermediate league. Yeah. Let me know. Let me know. It's in California. It is. Yeah. 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 Let me know. Let me know. Don't be afraid. Perfect. Excellent. Thank you so much. No problem. Um, Sydney's my favorite city, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> you got that one right. Correct. Well done. Correct. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me, guys. You guys have a good night or a good day. Thanks, Tony. Thanks, Tony. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Later. Thank you.